Okay. So this advice we will be going over today to Karen Tomer, the Dong Chi Hong Kong. I'm going to go to Oprah. And yeah, I'm Chris. So um, today we'll be going over what the Karen Tomer is, the motivation behind it, some background information, applications, how it works, and finding resources. So the Karen Tomer is also known as the Oak the Logger, and it measures the curvature of your cornea to determine the extent the keratometer was built based on the prevalence among uh, Americans with astigmatism. One in six Americans have astigmatism, 45 million have astigmatism, and two thirds of those with, who experience nearsightedness have an astigmatism. Um, complications with uh, astigmatism leads to a laser guy, and uh, tre treatments can involve um, contact lenses, uh, glasses, and more extreme cases, laser surgery. Um, and astigmatism, when you see an image, it would, instead of reflecting into one focal point, it would reflect in two different areas, so it would usually lead to a blurred vision, which is very um, prob problematic for someone who's experiencing astigmatism. So some causes of astigmatism is that they can either be present birth, so they're hereditary, or they can acquire later on in life from either too much pressure from the eyelids on the cornea, incorrect posture, or increasing the bias with close words, such as so um, some background information on the keratometer. Uh, the early attempts to uh, measure the curvature of the cornea was uh, used, or they used uh, rulers and compasses. And obviously this method wasn't really um, accurate or reliable. So um, the first keratometer was created by uh, Von, uh, Von Helmholtz, and he created it based on the fundamental uh, uh, based on two fundamental principles, uh, the first one being that uh, the cornea was assumed to be a spherical reflecting surface, and the radius of the curvature of cornea can be calculated from measuring the image um, produced by the reflection of the cornea of an object of known size and distance from the cornea. Uh, basically, you can treat the cornea as a, uh, a spherical, uh, spherical, uh, uh, re spherical re reflecting surface and um, uh, by um, by using oh uh, and, and you can easily determine the uh, curvature uh, the radi the radius of the curvature of the cornea by using uh, laws of um, reflection and uh, similar triangles and the second principle is that uh, even though the eye moves you can still obtain an accurate uh, measurement by using the image doubling concept and um, in 1881, Louise, Emile Javal, and Jamal August Schultz, they took the original um, Van Helmholtz device, and, which was uh, primarily used in uh, laboratories, and they modified it so that it can be uh, more easily used in uh, clinical practices. And um, <coughs> over the years, uh, a number of uh, modification additions were made to the uh, keratometer. And uh, some of the differences between the modified keratometer and the early keratometer is that um, the Myers, uh, they were uh, illuminated in the front rather than trying to illuminate in the back. And this allowed for um, the device to be rotated around its axis and enabled measurement in multiple meridians. So some applications of the keratometer, as I stated previously, it measures the curvature and flexion of the interior um, surface of the cornea. It can also diagnose the stigmatism and determine the degree and extent to which it happens in hopefully treatment. Uh, the keratometer also provides an LED light as a point of focus for the patient, and this light is refracted, so surgeons can use this information to make proper incisions on the eye uh, during cataract and corrective eye surgery. So I feel like this image right here is a normal cornea is um, perfectly spherical. However, if you look at the eye affected by astigmatism, it's more elongated and it kind of closed out. So how it works, uh, the measurement of course is astigmatism. Sensors are optical sensors, and the signal processing is that optical sensors and computerized technology are used to make comparisons and contrasts between cornea against pre-known values. And the keratometer actually provides a certain number, and optometrists can use this number um, still know what the cutoff is for a normal eye or one affected by astigmatism, and we can also determine the extent of the astigmatism. Okay, so the keratometer is two different types. Um, the first one being the Duval Schultz principle, where there's a fixed image of fixed doubling size, and the object size is adjustable to determine the radius of the curvature among the reflective surface. Um, it will 
would use a red, sca a red square and bring the staircase to um, maintain a fixed distance from the eye. And it applies the Shiner principle, which um, to use um, for an to autofocus the, the image. And this converges to reflective rays into one focal point so that you can see it through the eyepiece. Secondly, you would use the Bosch and Lone principle, which um, in contrast to the Duval Schultz, the fixed is a fixed object size and the image size is adjustable. And it gives readings in reflective ray forms, which is determined by an equation. And you would use the Shiner disc with four apertures and it has two prisms which are perpendicular to each other and the major and minor axis would be used to determine the aperture. So the equation that Kier Tomer uses is this equation right here. So um, there's a relationship between the radius of the reflective surface and the distance between the reflective surface and the object, image size and object size. So to, 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 to determine three of these four variables, you can actually use uh, one of the two principles that go to just one first. So now we're going to do a comparison of the keratometer to another device that's Warfare. And it was found that the Tawafer had uh, many more advantages over the keratometer. And, um, uh, for the Tawafer, it actually takes a picture of the eye and draws a series of concentric circles, as you can see on that top picture on the left right there. And from that picture, you can determine the eye's diameter, uh, the pupil size and aperture. The right side right here, it shows the topographic um, image of the eye. As you can see, it shows the entire surface of the cornea, so you can get a better understanding of the cynicism. Whereas the keratometer will only show from the center, three millimeters from the center, so this whole area right here to determine the cynicism, so topography will give you a better understanding so that you can apply it to contact lenses and glasses. So in conclusion, all of the topography is more advanced. Um, the keratometer is still a very good instrument to use because it is financially attractive, it's easier to use, and patients are very familiar with it, which is why the keratometer is actually the gold standard for measuring the <laughs> So since since it's measuring with the, it, does it shine like a light and then that's reflected into a detector? Like how does it actually like measure like, the, is it all like imaging or like, is it shining like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The process is really complicated to actually understand, but we do know that it's, it's just reflected and the reflected light is obscured from the original image or how you would normally see a, an image, then you would know that you have the process is like beyond my knowledge. Is that an incorrect question to give you a signal? How is that? Um, I'm not too certain, but I guess if you're not sitting or walking properly, there's too much pressure on your eyes, which can result in this. <laughs> Do you know how we feel easy on you? <laughs> <laughs> Weapon these it, but it does lead to um, a lazy, I guess, because the, the change of shape begins to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>